Hey everyone, in this tutorial I want to show you a couple textures I've used for the impact and we're going to create those in substance. I've got those three. Uh, this is just a simple sprite I'm using for the impact. This is being displayed on the disk and the disk mesh has the vertex colors as well. And another one I'm displaying on the same disk is actually this one and I'm using it for the smoke uh, shockwave. So let me select the particle system so we can go through it. So that's the whole impact. And that's one of those textures being displayed on the disk. That's the smoke shockwave. And also as you can see here going upwards, it's this main uh, impact effect. All right, so let me get rid of that one and show you the whole sequence. We've got a cast, which we've done a previous month and then we are having this impact with the decal on the ground. All right, so let's dive into Substance and let's create those three textures. Okay, so let me start with shape. I'm gonna take the size on the Y axis just a bit. I'm gonna get next transformation 2D node and move it manually down slightly. Okay, and next bit is the blend because I actually wanna subtract some shapes from that strip. So I'm gonna use a tile sampler. And in here, I'm gonna select pattern to be disk for the amount, I'm going to maybe change this to 35 and that one maybe to 15. So they will look a bit more stretched and going to go down to position random as well. And I'm going to use my strip as a mask map input here. I'm going to go down to mask map threshold, maximize it and then invert it. And now we can play with the scale. So I'm going to change this to quite a high number and I'm going to put slight random as well on the Y side. Okay. And now maybe let's play with the, with those settings. I'm actually going to change that one to maybe 1.2. Okay. I'm going to play with the scale random somewhere maybe a 0.8 or 0.9 and I'm gonna go to position random now try to get a slightly better looking uh, shape here okay next I'm gonna play with those and see if I can maybe add a bit more spiky uh, shapes to that strip and I think it looks okay so next I'm just going to plug it into the blend and subtract it from our uh, strip shape. Okay. And once we have this, I would like to create a gradient. So I'm maybe going to get another uh, blend in here. I'm going to get a gradient like this. I'm going to use histogram scan to create a better contrast or control. And in here, I'm just going to set this to multiply. And with my uh, histogram scan, I'm just going to modify those. So as you can see, we are getting gradients. So here it's nice and very bright. And here it's a uh, darken. And now we can just play with it and erase the bottom part of this. Perfect. And once I have the main shape, I could just get a transformation a node rotated 180. I'm also gonna get the uh, slope blur. And I'm just gonna use a gradient in that slope blur. And as you can see, I can just ramp up the samples 
and here as well I could put maybe 30 or even more just to spread that shape there if you are having some artifacts like I do here at the top you could just grab this uh, slope blur and try to maybe get rid of the tiling node and I should get rid of it okay with this you can try different options I think in that case uh, blur works best and once I have this shape I'm gonna use the shape mapper and map it to the circle you can experiment with the pattern amount personally I'm just gonna go maybe with three in that case I don't think I need any um, any more although I want to play with this intensity because it might be it might gives me better results and once I have this I would love to uh, for those shapes to be a bit more spiky so what we could do we could go back to our tie sampler and experiment with the with the values we've put in here okay so I think 13 amount uh, gives us some really cool results I'm just gonna stick with it and next I want to apply another slot blur but if I'm gonna do it uh, here I'm gonna need a shape which will be the soft disk as you can see it might give you some cool ideas about a um, few effects you can do uh, with this kind of like a shockwave and here I'm just gonna select a soft circle and as you can see once I do this it goes outside the edge so it might be a good idea to grab transformation tool plug it before our slope blur and just scale it down slightly so I'm holding alt on uh, alt and shift on my keyboard and using my mouse to scale it slightly down and in here now I can apply a bit more intensity to create uh, a lot more spikes uh, in my texture so even looking at that texture I think it might be pretty useful especially for the shock boys right but let me go back a little bit here because I actually want to use um, one of the main shapes which is that one and create a smoke shockwave from it okay so in here I'm just gonna use transformation in case I have to use it or offset it uh, next I'm gonna use a simple blur with the default settings for now next I'm gonna blend it and I'm gonna grab one of the grunge noises I'm gonna try maybe leaks I'm gonna run it through the blur first and run it through our blend and in here I'm gonna try different options And maybe multiply might work so we get a nice a variation there and also I would like to add this texture back in so I'm gonna use a blend node and try to use a various settings here so I think I have to use add however I could just do this with the 0.5 opacity and I'll be adding it uh, onto that texture might be a good idea to try different options uh, I think I have to use add or copy I think copy might work as well actually slightly better because with add I'm gonna overblown these areas and I don't want it so I'm just gonna set it to copy and maybe opacity somewhere around 0.3 so that's gonna give me a main shape when it comes to smoke and obviously you want that texture to be displayed and on the disc at least this is what I did uh, with some vertex colors and it seems like it worked for me okay so that's one of the textures uh, done now let's go back to this and let's focus on some nice uh, impact shapes uh, so in here the texture is very regular so I would like to maybe get rid of some of the shapes uh, from that texture and what we could do we could just use one of our grunge noises we've got here let me zoom in in case you can see the notes 
And also I'm gonna grab a couple more here as well. So let me get maybe directional and noise four. I am going to rotate it 90 degree. For now with the default settings, later we could tweak those. Uh, let me find maybe a few here as well. That one. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we're going to try. Actually, I want this one, Crystal 2. And finally, maybe just uh, scratches. Directional scratches. I'm going to set the rotation as well to 90. I'm going to get the scale back to one put some disorder some patterns as well play with the pattern size and we end up with something like this i'm not sure if it's gonna work but let's try with different uh, different textures first okay so because this is a circle we have to map or create a system how we can map those textures into a circle so i'm gonna use a shape mapper for this with the radius of zero, width set to one, pattern amount, I don't think we need that much, maybe three as well. Uh, next, I'm gonna use a, a slope blur. And in here, I'm just gonna add the soft circle shape with max samples and maybe just a little bit of intensity. Next, I'm going to use histogram scan. So I can decide, as you can see here, how much of that texture I actually need. Finally, on this, I'm going to get another slow blur using the same texture. Maximize the samples and play with the intensity. And I think I've picked the wrong texture because I actually want to use this soft circle. So we're getting a lot better results now and now. I could just use a blend node and subtract that texture from our main impact. Okay, here we got a slider. Depends how much of um, that you want to get rid of it. I think maybe half or maybe 0.6 might be a good idea. And in here now, we can go back to our histogram scan here. As you can see, this side how much we actually want to get rid of it. So now let's try different noises. I'm just gonna plug those at default and I'm gonna play with the histogram scan to create various shapes. So that's really cool. A lot of random shapes. Uh, let me try that one. Very similar, but much larger shapes. And that one's gonna give us probably a lot more details. Okay, so I think I like that one a lot. And after this, it might be a good idea to actually run it through auto levels just to normalize the values. I'm just gonna plug it here at the bottom in case I actually don't wanna use it. And once we have this, we can actually revert it in case we wanna display it on the disk. Okay, so in the same way as we could display our smoke uh, shockwave that we've done here we can also use those impact textures to be displayed on the mesh disk if that's what you need next i'm gonna run this through another auto levels just in case and then you can just use transform to move it towards the middle it depends how you laid out your uvs on that disk Okay, so that's done. Obviously, we can just go back here where our noises are, replug them, and we could get a slightly different looking textures for that impact, okay? If those are a little bit um, too hard on the edges, you can obviously run it through slight blur and combine them back together before exporting. 
as I think ideally set them to max and then operate with that opacity value depends how much you need it. Uh, let me re replug this because we want to control the glow rather than main texture. As you can see, just a slight glow to the edges. All right, so those textures might be used on the disk. Let's carry on with this and let's create some uh, sprites in case you need sprites rather than a textures being displayed on the mesh. All right, so let me actually isolate part of that uh, texture. So I'm going to use blend and let me create a couple masks here. I'm going to get a shape, which I'm going to scale on this axis. I'm going to use shape mapper and with the pattern amount of just one radius zero width max and I'm just gonna blur it slightly with the default settings, but I'm gonna disable tiling on it. I'm gonna plug it here and set it to multiply. And next, I'm just gonna use the transform to rotate it like this. And also while we're here, I could just grab the bottom of it and stretch it down. So it's gonna cover a larger space. Cool. Next, I'm gonna use Trapzoid. Traps Trapzoid really gives me good results when it comes to impact effects because I could just stretch the top of it and squash it slightly. I don't need much, maybe 50% so or 0.5. And finally, I'm just gonna use the trick with the blur and blend it back into my main texture using the max settings. It depends how much glow you actually need there. And you can repeat that process and also you can apply some slope blur to it if you want. I think I'm just gonna copy that process two times. So I'm gonna create another blend, another blur. Plug it back in. And this needs to be set to max. However, this blur is going to be and maybe triple, so 30. I think 30 might be a bit too much. Oh, maybe 20 then. Oops. And I can decide here how much of that I actually want. Low amount, maybe 0.5, it should be okay. And we have a an impact texture. Just to see if it's gonna be working well with the colors, I wanna create a gradient node. go with the orange here and here maybe with the reddish color and as you can see it might work quite well okay finally i'm just gonna apply glow to it in case you need a color texture from substance Play with those settings. Just to get slight glow. And I'm gonna pick a better color for my glow. A yellow. Okay. So that'll be one of the impacts. And now we could go back to our noises, replug those, and see what other textures we might get. Even without any noises, you can see you're getting a very stylized shapes. However, I usually like to get rid of some of it and add a bit more details to those textures. Okay, so I think that might be a impact texture generator, obviously in a one or two styles, but it worked very well for me and I hope it could work for you. Let me plug this one in just so I can see. We're getting some nice results with it as well. So it depends what you need it for. If you need it just a sprite, I think that could do the job. However, if you want to display as a shockwave on a, a disk mesh, you could just use those and create your own impacts. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope it helped you a little bit uh, understand how to make those kind of generators for the impacts and see you in the next one.